In a sole trader, the owner will receive all the profits. In a partnership, the profits will be divided between the partners in their profit-sharing ratio. In a company, the shareholders provide the capital to the business and they want to share the profits of the business. The method that's used to share the profits of the business is by issuing dividends. So for every share that you have, you will receive a dividend. In this case, on the 1st of March, 24,000 Rand was owed to shareholders. That means that we have to pay that at the beginning of the next financial year. So on March the 17th, we will issue a check to the shareholders to pay for the dividends that was declared at the end of the previous financial year. And we will credit the bank to indicate that the money was taken out of the bank, so the money in the bank reduced, and we paid it out to the shareholders 24,000 rand. On the 30th of August, the company declared and paid an interim dividend of 10 cents per share. An interim dividend is declared in the middle of the financial year because the shareholders don't only want to receive money once a year. So in the middle of the year, a small income statement is prepared and we calculate more or less what is the profit and then we decide how much dividend or how much of the profits will be paid out to the shareholders. The dates on which the shares are uh, paid out and the dividend is declared is the 30th of August. If we remember on the previous page, the new shares were issued on the 31st of August. So they were not issued on the date that this dividend was declared. So we will show on August the 30th that we will only pay dividends to the old shareholders that was 400,000 shares times 10 cents. So we will have an expense of 40,000 rand. And in the middle of the year, the dividends must always be paid immediately because the purpose is that the shareholders will receive money twice a year. So it's very important to remember that the interim dividend that is declared in the middle of the year will always be declared and paid. Then we issued more shares on the 31st of August, 100,000. So it means now we've got 500,000 shares in the business. On the 28th of February, that is the last day of the financial year, a final dividend of 20 cents per share was declared. So if we multiply with 20 cents, we get 100,000. So the ordinary share dividends expense will increase with 100,000 on February the 28th. We didn't pay this dividend or we can pay the dividend. In this specific case, it was written, declared and paid. That means that the total amount was paid when this final dividend was declared and the transaction will be done in the same way as the interim dividend. The only share dividends will be debited and the bank will be credited. If we change this and we say on the 28th of February they declared a final dividend, it means that they didn't pay the dividend. So then we will show that this money is owed to the shareholders. The shareholders is the owners of the business. Why do we owe them money for dividends? So they are like a creditor at the end of the financial year. 
and we will credit the shareholders for dividends with the total amount that must be paid to them in the next financial year and we will debit the ordinary share dividends and indicate that this amount is owed to the shareholders. What is very important here, if we don't pay the final dividend, the closing balance at the end of the year for the shareholders for dividends will always equal the final dividend. So that means this balance will be 100000 That is important to remember when we get to cash flow statements that you can determine out of the closing balance what was the final dividend declared.